Okay, the next joint that I want to talk about is the oblique mid-tarsal joint. The oblique mid-tarsal joint is made of the anatomical joint at the calcaneal and cuboid joint, and then the longitudinal joint dictates the lateral column of the foot in terms of its movement in both the transverse and sagittal planes. So when we're talking about the axis of the oblique mid-tarsal joint, we want to talk about it in relationship to both the sagittal and the transverse planes. So I observe here, I'm looking at my oblique mid-tarsal joint, and the axis for the oblique mid-tarsal joint is 52 degrees from the sagittal plane. So if I place my axis guide here, and remember that the sagittal plane is going to divide the foot equally into a left and a right side, I'm going to deviate this 52 degrees towards the midline of the body. Remember that the, long, or the oblique mid-tarsal joint is a pronatory supinatory axis which means that the axis runs mad. It runs medial, anterior, and distal. So we're going to originate here. We're going to go 52 degrees from the sagittal plane. Then this axis is 56 degrees from the transverse plane. So we're going to move it in this direction. The oblique mid-tarsal joint, when it goes through its motion, because it's deviated significantly from the sagittal plane, will have a significant portion of sagittal plane motion. It is also deviated a great amount from the transverse plane. So we'll have transverse plane motion. What that means is with pronation of the oblique mid-tarsal joint, we have predominantly abduction and dorsiflexion. And with supination of the oblique mid-tarsal joint, we have predominantly plantar, we have predominantly, uh, plantar flexion and adduction. So if I were to turn around the foot and kind of let you see how this axis really means, or really moves, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is to cup the calcaneus and then reach across the foot and I'm going to grab the cuboid. When I grab the cuboid and I put it through a range of motion, you can appreciate that that motion is abduction and dorsiflexion, that would be pronatory, and then adduction and plantar flexion, which would be supinatory. If I were to turn it around, you can appreciate what's going on in the forefoot. What you can see is if I have pronation, I have dorsiflexion and abduction. If I have plantar flexion and adduction, I have the supinatory component of the oblique mid-tarsal joint. So if I want to go ahead and take this and correlate it to a foot, again, I'm looking at the lateral column of the foot. Calcaneal cuboid joint is located right here. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is take this axis and take it 52 degrees from the sagittal plane. And then I want to take this axis and move it 56 degrees from the transverse plane. And this orientation running mad is going to be the orientation of the oblique mid-tarsal joint. It's going to move predominantly once again in the sagittal and transverse planes. With dorsiflexion, it will abduct. With plantar flexion, it will adduct. So to demonstrate this, is if I cup the heel, and I reach around the foot, and I'm grabbing here at the cuboid. As I put the foot through a range of motion, you can appreciate that dorsiflexion, abduction, plantar flexion, adduction. And that's the normal range of motion you expect to see with the oblique mid-tarsal joint.